Good morning. Welcome to the Church of the Nativity in Raleigh, North Carolina for our service of morning prayer on this the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. I'm the Reverend Stephanie Allen and I welcome you with us this morning. You may follow along and read the responses and say the prayers with me using the bulletin, the link above, or using your prayer book. If you would turn to page 79 of your Book of Common Prayer, we begin with the confession. Again, good morning and welcome. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have a mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be, to, more to be desired are they than gold and more than much fine gold sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. 
Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and the lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. Here ends the reading. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid for the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The second lesson is Philippians 3, verses 4 through 14. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his re resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. 
Now that I have already obtained this and have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Here ends the reading. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Jesus said, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the Scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized he was speaking about them. 
They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. Here ends the reading. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's uh, good to see you all today. <laughs> I miss you all. I know you're so tired of hearing me say it. I miss you. I do. But I'm so glad and so grateful that we can gather in this way, as, as strange as, as it seems. Um, today is a cool day because it is also the Feast of St. Francis today. Now, on Sunday for Sunday morning, of course, we celebrate Sunday morning, right? And we use those, those proffers, those prayers. Um, but we did, we will include the prayer for St. Francis today in our prayers. And this afternoon, we will have a special online blessing of the animals in honor of St. Francis and uh, read those prayers there. And it's interesting today we have another parable, uh, <laughs> another parable of Jesus talking with the religious elders and priests in the temple. And uh, there's certainly a theme in there of, of, of stewardship and, and caring for the land. I'll get to that in a minute. I'm not dodging it. I promise you. I, I, I will say, I did think of, I read the parable, and I did think, oh, maybe I just won't talk about the gospel this week. <laughs> but, but I will, but I will. But, but first, I, I actually wanted to, uh, even the first reading, the Ten Commandments, right? This is the, the, this reading from Exodus 20, and we start at the first verse, and we finish at the 20th, but there are verses that are left out, in between, um, especially verses around the Sabbath, which is interesting. I mean, it's not entirely necessary. You, you get what the what the text is saying. You get the the idea, but those verses that are left out really do hit home the fact that Sabbath was truly for everyone, even the animals, even your servants, even your slaves. Like everyone gets. A Sabbath. Everyone has the dignity of human life and de and deserves rest. Um, so so you can see well, that if you're I, I don't know I guess if you're trying to keep these things short you think oh we we don't really need that necessarily but it it is an important point. Most interestingly too there is a verse twenty one that does seem to conclude what is happening here of, of, of this relaying of these, and I, I think we do ourselves a dis, really a, a disservice by calling it commandments rather than these community boundaries, um, that, that there are practices, there are a way of being and existing in a community, how we relate to each other in this community and how as a community we also relate to God and what what that does to those relationships so it's not just Moses talking to God the people are there too and this last verse which the lectionary developers left out says then the people stood at a distance while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. And, and, and that's interesting to think that that was left out. Um, we, we have a hard time talking about darkness in positive ways. Um, I think Western Christianity, especially, we have this real dualism between dark and light. And light is good and dark is bad. But I think if we if we have a more nuanced read of all of scripture and we look at the entirety, it, it's things like this, it's verses like this that remind us God is still there, even in the darkness. And, and we, don't, we don't really help ourselves by, by having this, this disconnect 
between light and dark, and, and really this judgment of it, that light is good and dark is bad. I mean, you think it, it does filter out into our culture, into our cultural understandings of things. I don't want to get too far into this, but I think you you see where I'm going with this, right? Like I said, so there's something just really beautiful about this, I think. Then the people stood at a distance while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. That God can be found in the dark. These people are refugees. They have left their homeland, or their homeland, but fleeing from servitude. They've just been giving this new way of, of being in community. You could say they are in the midst of a thick darkness. They have not yet arrived at their final destination. They've been promised that it's there, but they have not gotten there yet. And, and, and there's not really been a clear roadmap. It really has been one day and the next and the next. It continues to unfold. So I, I actually really resonate that with that right now. Um, I think that's what's happening. It feels right now that you could read the news and say, wow, there's a lot of darkness in our world. There's a lot of uncertainty and lack of clarity. There's certainly a great deal of pain and suffering. Um, there is a great deal of sickness. I just news this morning, I'm recording this on Friday, the news this morning that, that, that our president now has COVID-19. So it's, it's, it's dark, it's uncertain, we are watching things unfold just as we are watching things unfold within our own lives. So forget the world stage or the global stage. Just, I would say our daily existence of trying to figure out what this new, I don't even want to call it normal, but what this existence of ours looks like. I, we, we have lost so much. I mean, this theme of loss just keeps coming up again and again, especially when I talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. We are still grieving what has been lost, and we have not found necessarily the new things to replace it. I, it it's, and then, you know, it was funny, this, the reading today, Paul talking about counting his losses as gains. Paul had this way of of how he was moving through the world. He had his identity, he had his status, he lost it all to become a follower of Christ, and yet he gained everything. But Paul too is interesting because his journey right now is still somewhat shrouded in darkness, in uncertainty. He has not arrived yet at this promised place of salvation. He is still walking through this world, trying to tell people about Jesus, waiting for Jesus to return, waiting to see what the fruits of the kingdom that have been promised, what are they going to look like? So, so he has experienced a loss. He has seen some of the gain, but they're not fully realized yet. Again, I wonder if this resonates with anyone. Which, which then leads to, I, I said I was talking about the gospel, and, and I will. I, I won't dodge it, though it was very tempting. It's, it's a, yet again another parable. Jesus in the temple right before the, the events that lead up to, to the cross. And he's again talking to, this follows what we heard last week. He's still continuing to answer the question of his authority from the religious elders and priests. And so we have this parable about the, the tenants of the vineyard. Now, he is alluding to a passage from Isaiah. It's Isaiah 5, if you want to go look at that. And it's about a vineyard and the vineyard owner. So there, there is an allusion to that. Um, and I was thinking, I, I think, if, if this were <laughs> normal times, or I don't know, uh, if this were kind of a usual, you all were here with me, I would definitely take this imagery of, of the tenants being, you know, the, the, the stewards of the kingdom. I mean, I think that's, that's kind of where this is going. And, and ask the question of how are we not only stewards of, of, of what we call the kingdom of heaven, but also stewards of, of this earth that has been given to us now. Um, so, and, and we could have a lot of fun playing with that about our stewardship 
of creation and how we are caring for what we have been given and thus caring for each other, remembering that, that our, our job as these tenants is to care for one another and to use the resources that, that the creation gives us to care for one another. Um, it's, it's an interesting, um, but, but we're not there. And I, and I fear right now that if I were to, to fully go into that, I, I think that would bring up a lot of, I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I feel a great deal of helplessness right now and, and a lot of limitations about what I can and cannot do and I'm not sure how to how to to go about my ministry, how I continue and I certainly have my own practices at home and especially in terms of creation care and stewardship. But but I think there's something bigger here actually and, and I think it's because we are existing in the middle of a global pandemic where so much has been taken away, where we are trying to find our footing and watching things unfold in this new newness of experiencing life that we have right now. And we will not fully see the gains um, for some time, perhaps. And, and I think it's, it's in that that this is the Lord's doing. Is, is what Jesus quotes the psalm, this is the Lord's doing. So that, that all of this has been given to us by God. And, and this, these fruits that Jesus references, that this, the fruits of the kingdom are there. Was what is being produced that is for the good of the kingdom, that the fruit of, of the kingdom. And I just... That image of fruit to me, right now, thinking about where fruit starts. Well, fruit starts a seed, right? I mean, any, any plant, anything that grows is a seed. And what do seeds need? Well, they need water, and they need warmth, and they start in darkness. I mean, when you plant a seed in, in the ground, it goes into the earth. It's not until later that, that you have, that, that the seed needs the light once the, the seed starts to grow. But at first, to germinate, it, it, it needs that darkness. And, and so I wonder, this parable, these communal boundaries that we hear in Exodus, Paul's unfolding journey, I wonder if this is not a reminder to us that right now there is something that is God's doing that is that is germinating in this world that that we are waiting to see it unfold we are God is bringing forth something new in all of us and this is true all the time, right? I just think it feels especially sharp right now when we're in the midst of feeling so much loss and so much uncertainty. That germination feels a little scary and a little hard to pin our hope on. But I wonder if verse 21 of Exodus is actually what we need to hear, while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. Maybe we need to draw near to the darkness. Maybe we need to keep looking out to what new thing God has planted within us, within our world, that will bear fruit that will be a sign of the kingdom. May you not be afraid of the darkness. May you not see a duality between light and dark, but embrace the necessity of darkness for that new way of being, that new fruit of the kingdom to come forth to grow in the spirit and for you to shine in your life. Pandemic, 
or no? Amen. Let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you made the universe with all its marvelous order, its atoms, worlds, and galaxies, and the infinite complexity of living creatures. Grant that as we probe the mysteries of your creation, we may come to know you more truly and more surely fulfill our role in your eternal purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. A few brief announcements before our offertory and intercessory prayers this morning. Welcome again. It's so good to see you all. Uh, we continue with having our online service. This online service will remain constant, consistent. It will be happening uh, at 1030, gathering here together in this way. Our in-person services continue as well. For those of you who are ready, no hurry, no rush, and move at the pace you are comfortable with. Well, we are having Holy Communion at 8 o'clock, 9.30, and usually 4.30, though no 4.30 service today. We can now have up to 50 people gather outside. Um, diocesan guidelines have moved us into that phase. So we currently have 40 slots for each service, holding some additional slots for clergy and altar guild, vestry representatives, those other kinds of things, you know, support help um, as well. So if you go online to our webpage, you can easily sign up. But again, not to worry, we'll still be doing online. We can still gather here, we will gather here. Today at five o'clock, come back here to this online space and we are having a special prayer service that is the blessing of the animals. You might have noticed that I said the prayer for St. Francis today. Today is the feast day of St. Francis. It's Sunday, so Sunday supersedes feast days, but ordinarily this, this would be the actual day. And typically for that feast day, we celebrate by blessing our beloved pets and coming here to church and, and doing that. So this year, we're gonna stay at home and still celebrate together, and it's gonna be a really neat service, so please join us. It's very cool to see people with their beloved animals. It's, it's one of my favorite, favorite times. So, happy Frank, St. Francis Day, and in the spirit of St. Francis, uh, let us remember St. Francis not only cared for creation and all of God's creatures, but especially for the poor, the neglected, and the sick. Uh, that this is what he was known for. This is his sainthood. This is um, why, why we remember him. So may we pay special attention this during this time to those who are ill, to those who are alone, to the poor, and to those who our society have neglected and placed on the margins. May our prayers and our action be oriented towards them in the spirit of St. Francis. Okay, you got another sermon there. Sorry about that. <laughs> We've had some changes to our youth activities um, as we go along, really, that our, all of us, I mean, not just our youth, all of us, we miss each other, we're tired of screens, so we are finding safe ways for our kids to gather, for our youth to gather. We'll continue to try and find safe ways for adults to gather in person. Um, so, so this will continue to be a work in progress. And I may very well make an announcement about something on one Sunday and a week later, it's changed. Um, all of our reopening, Everything we keep changing is all dependent on what our cases are for the state of North Carolina and particularly for Wake County. So as we make these changes, as we start to move into our spaces again, we have to keep in mind we're trying new things out. We have to stay safe. There are a number of protocols for us to follow. And the only way we're going to figure this out is to try things and to see how they work. So I'm gonna to continue to ask for your patience. I'm gonna to continue to ask for your flexibility. I'm, I'm gonna to continue to ask for your patience with me as what I might tell you one day might very well change the next day. And, and I apologize for that, but this, this is the only way I know how to do this is for us to try it. And we're getting new information daily. I mean, I, I think that's just true of, of so many things. But so things, we might be going along one way and have things changed. So again, I ask your prayers. 
I ask your patience and hang in there. We're gonna get through this. We're gonna get through this. So I have talked too long. It is time for our offertory to hear some beautiful music and to have some prayer and meditation time for that. So those of you who have given, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you would like to give right now, very easy way to do it. Follow the link to Venmo or PayPal. We appreciate everything that you are doing. Ascribe unto the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts with thanksgiving. We continue with the prayers of intercession. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, especially Michael, Sam, and Anne, for this gathering, for all ministers and people. And in the Anglican and Diocesan cycles of prayer, the Anglican Church of Tanzania, St. Mark's Wilson, St. Timothy's Wilson, La Iglesia de la Guadalupana Wilson, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, for the leaders of all nations, and for the safety and well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the sick in our community, especially Becky. Bill, Carol, Chuck, Don, Don, Frank, Jack, Janie, Jenny, Karen, Mary, 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 Maxine, Michael, Pam, Richard, Richard, Ron, Sam, Tim, and those we name now. Pray for healing and relief. I ask your prayers for our friends, family, and neighbors, especially Allie, Anna, Anne-Marie, Anna Rose, Audrey, the Barham family, Becky, Beth, Bill, Bob, Carly, Casey, Kathy, Charlie, Dan, Dean, Diane, Dick, and Don. We lift up Eddie, Ellie, Emma, Faye, Gary, Gemma, George, Harry, Helen, Henry, Jake, James, Jason, Jason, Jalen, Jeanette, Joe, Joe, Julia, Justin, Karen, and Kathleen. We ask for healing for Catherine, Keith, Kelly, Kelvin, Kenny, Kevin, Leisha, Lori, Madeline, Mary, Matt, Megan, Michael, Michelle, Mimi, Nancy, and Patricia. We pray for Patricia, Roy, Roy, Sally, Sandy, Sarah, Shannon, Shirley, Skye, Sandra, Spencer, Stephanie, Stephanie, Steve, Sylvie, Tom, Vivian, William, and those we name now. Pray for comfort 
from affliction. I ask your prayers for all expecting a child, especially Robert and Brianna, and those we name now. Pray for a new life. I ask your prayers for all health care workers, especially those in the Nativity community. Pray for our healers. I ask your prayers for all who have died from COVID-19. I ask your prayers for all the departed, especially J. Von Brannock, Stanley Gray, Charlotte Huckabee, Mark Porter, Michael Sweet, and those we name now. Pray for the dead. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love, in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory for all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever. Amen. Amen.